when I grew up, I was taught that if you're saved, you should not go to the movie theater. I grew up very conservative and I was also taught that if you're saved, uh, there, thank goodness in my immediate circle, I didn't hear this, but there were some that associated with our church that believed that there should be no pants on women or that if you have anything other than the organ on the left side or, and the piano on the right, or, you know, they always have these very specific, no, I'm sorry. I can't believe I forgot this. The organ goes on the right. The piano goes on the left. You were and just I mean, a little more strictly raised than I was. It sounds like. Oh man. I mean, it, it, there were rules attached with being saved and, um, you know, you, you can imagine the, the difficulty that I had with the verses about the, the Lord Jesus turning water into wine. I mean, I was taught if you touch any alcohol, that is a a sign of the devil. My mom so, always, my mom always said, "That was just grape juice, Jimmy." That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's what I was taught too. And so there's confusion in that. And so here's here. Let's get into the psychology of this just for a second because I think it's super important. If I am a person who, let's just take alcohol for an example, or the movie theater, it doesn't matter, something like that that's kind of a gray area that the Lord needs to impress upon my heart and convict me for as his follower, let's say movie. So a Christian movie comes out, and some of your friends go to see it, but you are of the conviction that if you're saved, you should not go to the movie theater. You've publicly said that. It's important. You, you're you out there. You post on Facebook about it. You post on social media. You tell everybody that comes to your house. You know, if you're a believer, you should not go. You know, what, you know what happens in a movie theater? The smut that they show. And you're a follower of Christ. You know, a believer has no business. And then you'll have verses attached to it. I will set no wicked thing before my eye. That's just your thing. You, you talk about that a lot. And I could do this with a lot of different things. But let's just say it's a movie. Well, here's the, here's the, here's the point. Somebody who really, really loves Jesus goes and sees that Christian movie. But you've already made your public stand. Now, you have a couple of choices. Uh, and here's what's going to happen if you're committed to your stance. You're going to start bad-mouthing and degrading the people that did go to see the movie. So that's really your only choice. It's that or change. And so you are forced to start gossiping and turning against your brother and sister in Christ because they don't share your very specific view on something. That would be majoring on a minor. I get talked down to all the time on, on these videos and other things because I don't see a minor thing the same way somebody else does, as if I'm not worthy to even be called a Christian for that. So you're setting yourself up with these majoring on a minor to start talking bad about somebody else who sees freedom in that. I've had people say, you guys meet on Sunday. You should only worship on a certain day. I say, well, I worship. My answer is always the same. I worship every day. I mean, we're doing this on a Thursday. I love being around the word of God on Thursday. I mean, I, I would meet at a, at an, I'd go to a, speak at a church on a Friday or on a Monday. I, I'm dedicated every day to the Lord. And people say, I can't believe you. I'm not listening to anything this guy says. His church meets on Sunday. Well, they, they did meet the first day of the week, folks, in the Bible. So, you know, there's that. Uh, but do you see the point? Once you publicly go down the road of this, then you have a choice. You can either change and be free, or you can attack somebody who doesn't see it the same way you are. That's exactly what Christ is talking about in verse 10, Matthew 24, 10. Then shall many be offended. They were scandalized. They saw the scandal and they attacked him. And instead of bowing before Jesus, they kicked at him. Now, all of this is talking about these kinds of folks that got converted and are going back over to Judy, uh, the Judaizers are getting to them. Now, let's go ahead and go down this road for a second. Second Timothy. Second Timothy was written around the same time as the close of the book of Acts. Paul is giving instruction to a young preacher named Timothy. In this backdrop, cultural backdrop of what we're talking about, we have such a dynamic right now. Folks are getting saved. Obviously, massive crowds are getting saved. The Jews are coming in trying to co-mingle the religion of the Mosaic Covenant and what Christ has taught. The, the end of this age is coming in AD 70, and Paul is writing and saying, 2 Timothy 3.1, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, they're covetous, boasters, proud, 
blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Notice what Paul says to Timothy. Timothy, from such turn away. Boy, wouldn't that be confusing if he wasn't talking to Timothy? If, it was, if those people aren't going to be there for 2,000 or 3,000 more years, Timothy's going to spend the rest of his life looking for people he can't find? No. I was going to say that does sound like what we experience nowadays, but you sure. know, he's Absolutely. definitely not writing that to us. It, 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 even if there's crossover, we definitely could find people these all apply to. Yeah, application but for sure. The application is for sure there. There is much, much, much evil in the world today. But my point is that Paul is telling Timothy when he sees people that fit this bill, turn away. He says, for this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. It gives an example here. That was Janus and Jambri withstood Moses. So do these also with resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. They shall proceed no further. Their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. But thou hast known fully my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience. The reason I'm reading all this is I want people to see this is the first century. Timothy, the reason you're going to do good is because you know the things that I've taught you. You have been taught these things since you were a kid. You're going to do okay, and it's because of the root of the, the gospel going so deep into your heart. Look what he says. Persecutions, afflictions, which came onto me. Okay, so see, of course, this is first century. Paul said, right in the same sense, see this right here? There's a comma. Patience. Then he says, persecution, same sentence, afflictions, which came on to me at, so he's saying this happened to me, same sentence. And I'm just going in detail because people are going to push back and say, this hasn't happened yet. It's clearly talking about what he's already gone through. It happened to him, at Paul, at Antioch, Iconium, Lystra. He says, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men, seducers, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. He says, but Timothy, in light of that, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. These are about the Lord Jesus, Timothy. You're going to do okay because you stay focused. That's what he's saying to him. From a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. This is a passage that says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instructions in righteousness. Why? That, that's the reason why we're going to study, that the man of God may be complete, perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This is not the word thoroughly, it's the word thoroughly. If I'm going to wash a cup, I'll hold up the cup and I'll go, in the cup from the top opening and wash it thoroughly. I'm going to thoroughly wash it. But throughly is I take off the bottom. Now it's a cylinder. It's a tube. Now I wash it all the way through. The Bible is there so that the word of so that the man of God may be complete throughly, not thoroughly, furnished onto, onto, onto. You're perfected. You're completed first. And then it's onto good works. Look at the very next chapter. Remember, there's no verses or chapter breakdown in the original. He says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing at his kingdom. Preach the word, Timothy. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why, Timothy? Why should you be doing this? For the time will come, Timothy, when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Some people have taught, said that about me on here. I've seen and they shall And they shall turn, turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned onto fables. 
But watch thou. See the word thou, folks? Timothy's supposed to be watching for these people. Uh, just kidding, Timothy. <laughs> Man, you missed it, bro. This is about America in 2024. You were looking your whole life for these people. You're never going to find them. It has nothing to do with you. No, Timothy, I want you to be looking for these things. I want you, Timothy, to endure afflictions. I want you, Timothy, to do the work of evangelists. I want you, Timothy, to make full proof of your ministry, thy ministry. It, it sounds like to me that Paul had the book of Matthew to read by this point. Do you think Matthew was written and available by now? Because uh, almost everything you've said, I've there's been sections of it in Matthew 24 I've, about the being persecuted, enduring until the end. Maybe when Jesus said enduring to the end, he was talking about enduring sound doctrine until the mm-hmm. end. You know? you know, there's a lot of similarities. And, and the uh, interesting thing about the four Gospels is that they, you know, obviously they were biographers. So the time that Jesus said this in AD 30, they actually didn't get their work, if we want to say published or write it down for about 25 years or 30 years. We don't usually often think of that. But yes, there's an order to that. And I do believe they were available for about five to seven years or so before Second Timothy would have been written. So very interesting to think about that. That is interesting. Now let's go, let's jump over to Revelation 2, just, be, just to show the continuity here. Revelation 2, the message to Ephesus, um, is much about a lot of the same stuff that we are talking about. He says to the church of Ephesus, write these things that saith that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know your works, your labor, your patience. How thou canst not bear them which are evil, hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. You found them liars. So he's giving them an admonition. Good job. It has borne and has patience for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because you've left your you've left your first love, because thou hast left thy first love. Huh. So one of these churches that Paul just mentioned in Asia Minor, the Roman controlled province of Asia, one of these churches has left their first love. Why? Why do they leave their first love? All of because these, they were all of these deceivers, or yes, uh, you know, That's itching ears, right. all that. That's exact, exactly right, exactly right. Remember, he's saying, remember, therefore, when that once thou art fallen, repent. You should do the things you're doing at the beginning. Jesus says, do your first works, or else I come unto thee quickly, remove your candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. This is the same thinking, and we could do that with all seven churches. This is the same thinking that that Paul said to the church at Galatia when he says in verse number six, Galatians 1, 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ onto another gospel, which is not another. See, there's not another valid gospel. People have can't come to you. He says there be some that trouble you. And what do they do? They pervert the gospel of Christ. He says, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. There is no other gospel. There's one gospel. As we said before, so we now, again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be anathema. Let him be accursed, separate from God forever. Paul's saying, "This this is an easy decision. Do I now persuade men or God? Who am I trying to please here? Am I a man pleaser or God pleaser? For if I seek to please men, do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And Jimmy, that is where I'm at with our videos. Mm-hmm. Me too. People, I, I know, and I, amen, amen to that. People can say, hey, this is not that popular. Am I trying to please God or men? Am I trying to get popular on YouTube or, 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 or grow a church that's going to be thriving? Hey, you know what grows a church today? Uh, Tell people that you have the key to unlocking the signs of the times. I have an insight into the wars of Ukraine. You don't think I could make that stuff up? Of course I could. I've, I've, I mean, got, a, I've got a saying I, I say sometimes, this is the end times industry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, bad news sells. Uh, scary yeah. stuff sells. 
Remember what Jesus says? This Don't be troubled when you see these things. The end is not yet. So my point is, all throughout this, uh, we can see that there are Judaizers coming in, and not only that, but there are people who believed them. And those folks are the Gentiles who got circumcised and are trying to keep the law of Moses, and they are just as dangerous as the Judaizers. They're, they're upset that they are doing this. So those people can understand. Second Peter is warning that these folks are going to get worse and worse. Jude is saying they're already here. Jude wanted to write a magnum opus about salvation. Jude probably has worked on his book about soteriology 101 and 102 and 103. Jude couldn't wait to write a nice long book on the basics of who Jesus is and how much Jesus has changed his life. But he didn't write about that. He put that book to the side and he wrote this little one chapter, insignificant, the opposite of a magnet, magnum opus, because he had a warning. He said, I scrapped that because you have to know about this. Look at Jude 1.1. 1, 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. That's a very specific order, by the way. Mercy always precedes peace and love. Well, I should say love follows mercy and peace. He said, beloved, the people that I love, the people I care for, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, that was my intention. I wanted to write a book about the common salvation. He says, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly fight, contend, for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. In other words, he's saying, I wanted to write about theology and how exciting salvation is, but guess what? We're under attack and it's time to fight. Academics aside, um, go, go get your boxing gloves on. There are certain men who crept in without us knowing, unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. They're ungodly men. What are they doing? They're turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. That word lasciviousness basically means this, whatever your impulse says, do it, obey your impulse. What are they doing? They're denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, the point of the book here is, I will put you in remembrance. That's the whole point of the book of Jude is to shake people up and get them to know that these men are here. The time has come. Look at 17 through 19. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, they're here. So keep yourselves in the love of God. Build yourselves up in your faith. Okay, that's why Jude wrote his book. Um, let's go ahead and go over to, um, I, this is where I get really um, tempted to do something deeper than we probably should. But let's look at Revelation chapter 12. Now we mentioned this last time with the timing of Jesus's birth. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18? Let me just show real quick. I think we even have it later in our, Remember what he said? Jesus came to me speaking, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That's the new thing. I had somebody ask me this week. Let me clarify. Am I saying that Jesus did not have any power at all? Or they said, he's God. How can you say he didn't have all power if he's God? Folks, understand, God emptied himself, Philippians 2, and became a man. He humbled himself. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he emptied himself and became a man. That doesn't mean Jesus at some point wasn't God. Yes, he was. He was God. He still is God. But God became a man. He went through this life in the same way that you and I went through this life. He said things like, I wouldn't know this if it weren't for my father. This is why he got baptized, so that the Holy Spirit could work through him. He always gave the Spirit of God the credit for all of his miracles. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would say this. I know this might blow somebody's mind, but maybe it'll be something to chew on. I welcome people to push back. So I've gone through each and every one of these, so I did look forward to that. There's nothing that Jesus did that another man couldn't do. 
through the power of God. He said, but he walked on water. So did Peter. He raised the dead. So did Paul. Jesus worked through the power of the spirit when he was a man. But when he died and resurrected, he was glorified. The difference was before his death, he depended on the power of the father through the Holy Spirit to do miracles and to do power, um, to do powerful things, to do these things that are from the power of God. And he always gave the father credit. I wouldn't know this if it weren't for my father. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, he always connects back to the father, but something changed after the resurrection. And you have to understand that dynamic when you're looking at the things Christ says previous to the cross and resurrection and after the cross and resurrection. Once he resurrected, the Bible says Jesus announced a new thing. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The access that Satan had to, the, to, the, to heaven changed at the resurrection. He, had, he was the accuser of the brethren, but now there's no place found for him. Jesus was given not only all power in heaven, but on earth, in earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them. There's the Great Commission. If you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. And check out the full episode by clicking the link below.